Hey everybody, welcome to my next uh, free tutorial Friday. Uh, I'm going to take the same line drawing I had from last week, and I was just showing you a couple of ellipse guides I'm going to use this week. Uh, there's some Copic markers I'm going to use, a uh, paintbrush, some Copic opaque white I like to use, and I am going to do traditional media rendering on this this week. What I mean by that is I'm going to use markers and a bit of gouache. So here I'm going to pop down a little bit of orange, and I'm going to use a little bit of this white, um, typically I use that Copic all the time if I'm doing white only, but if I'm doing, I want to mix the white with the orange, so I want them to be the same uh, brand. And I am going to marker this with renders. I'm also going to use a little bit of a warm color, so I'm using E41. It's called pearl white, I think. And it's just to warm up the ground plane so I have a little bit of bounced light that's warm. And uh, I'm also going to cool down the background, so I'm going to use cool markers for this one. So it's much like last week's uh, tutorial same drawing I just uh, printed it from my from uh, Photoshop so I scanned it out of my sketchbook uh, printed it on a piece of like copy paper and grabbing some markers and so basically we do the same thing uh, same rendering same steps uh, but all with markers instead of Photoshop and you'll see that it's pretty much uh, the exact same thing so uh, you know hopefully it still works for you it's just using a different medium but it's going to be trying picking all the same values. Uh, I'm going to change it up a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about lighting. We have basically an overhead light source. And if I had no shadow on this, I might move the light around a little bit. But since I already have a shadow as part of my line drawing, I'm just going to go with it uh, in this top lighting scenario and see if it works. And so you start with the light markers first, and then you go darker because they're permanent right if you want if you screw up and you make it dark the only way to get it light again is to go back over with white pencil or gouache so you always want to sort of sneak up when you're doing marker work and sort of sneak up on the values because you can always go darker but you can't go lighter uh, not easily anyway so um, I already know from doing the one in Photoshop um, and I already did one actually before this guy um, to see if I wanted to do this or not and so I kind of already know my value structure, so it makes it a little easier. You know, if I was just starting this out um, and I hadn't done a prior sketch, I might not go in, you know, and darken the shadow all the way to like, a, this I think is a number four. So these are cool gray markers, and this is a number four, and I'm just blocking out. And I'm thinking a little bit about my value graphics. So if you watch my proximity-based styling lecture, you know what I'm talking about. Um, where, you know, if the tires are dark rubber and the rest of the vehicle is lighter, then you know the the sort of in the light of that tire so across the top half you know it's only going to get to a certain value so i could say well the brightest that tire is going to ever get is a value four right so you grab a number four marker and you can just block in the entire tire and um, with all of it blocked in uh, then you know you have to just work darker from that and it's just doing a loose cast shadow there across that little side structure from that overhead uh, sort of contain container that's sticking on the back of this truck and then you start going darker so the first thing I did was hit the uh, like the number two side there with uh, I think a number three marker so again it's sort of top lit right you can see the shadow straight down so I'm gonna say it's getting a little bit of light on these vertical sides so that I can do a bit of that cast shadow that I just blocked in there um, so just cheat it a little bit towards us the position of the light and allows me to cast a little shadows on that vertical surface which helps the form to read a bit now it's really nice about having a line drawing that's all finished um, and you've defined all your sections and your surfaces it really provides you with a nice roadmap to go back in and apply your values and we saw my left hand pop in there I was holding a big stack of them so that's tends to be how I work so I hold you know a big stack of markers because I like to work quickly and a lot of times if you're trying to do gradations with markers you need to work while they're still wet and push and so you can you block it in you sort of wet it out with a light marker and see like right there I'm just blocking it in and this is relative light marker it's like a five and then I'm going to use a four while it's still wet and sort of smear that you know and blend that around so I'm just going to hit it there with a little four maybe a five that's right in the core shadow and then I'm just going to smooth it out and so you can just keep getting darker and darker and darker. So it's a little pretty easy to, you know, keep evaluating um, your values and then 
pushing where you need to, and you can get the markers to do gradations. It's going to be have a few steps, but it's okay. Um, your eye will blend that together. And if you want to really try and get out the, you know, the gradation or the steps, then you can come back over it with a pencil if you wanted, and you could smooth out those steps. But in this case, it's fine. You know, quick sketch. And the sketch measures, you can tell by my hand, it measures about six inches, a little more than six inches wide, um, which is a pretty nice scale for these markers. Um, if it was any larger, I would have a tough time, uh, as you'll see, because I'm going to block in the background as well. Now, you don't have to do the background, um, but in this case, I wanted the, the brightness of the uh, top of the truck to come to life a bit. And in order to make that happen, because it's basically white on white paper, uh, the only way to make that happen is to put something dark behind it. So we'll get there in a couple minutes. Um, this one is sped up about uh, 250%. Uh, I think last week's was about 200. So this one took a little bit longer, I think. Um, probably because I just, you know, I'm not quite, I haven't been doing a lot of marker sketching and I had to go redo my whole setup this morning uh, with my camera. So I haven't been working over there. Uh, but these are not, these are pretty quick ones to do. You know, if I had sort of at my normal desk with the whole setup and everything accessible and easy to get going, probably about the same time as Photoshop. Um, so I think they should run about this sketch about 35 minutes, maybe 35 to 45. So with traditional media, this probably took 45. Last week, I think, took about 35 with the Photoshop. Um, you know, Photoshop's a little faster because it's not color picking back and forth. Um, you can just pick from the sketch once you get it blocked in. So on and off caps of markers, that sort of stuff. It takes a little while. And you have to mix up some gouache, right, that sort of thing. But it's pretty fun. I love traditional media sketching. Um, markers are really fun. And, and it's what's nice, too. You have this, like, very tangible uh, sketch when you're done. Um, that it's on a real piece of paper. That's always fun. I think it shows a lot of times better than something done in Photoshop. Even if you print the thing out of Photoshop, there's just something about it that, that doesn't have quite the same appeal. So here I'm blocking in the background and pushing that a bit. And you'll see as I go around, right, and add the background, then the top surface of that shape of that box on the back of this truck really comes to life because it's up against that darker value. Now, really, you squint your eyes at it, it looks more like light landing across the top surface of it. I tried to not flip this very much this week. This I did it just a couple times where I had to get to an edge, right? It was very hard to hold the marker that other direction and without screwing up the top edge of that shape. So typically when I'm working, I'll spin that page around a lot. But in this case, I tried to keep it to a minimum. So just a couple times. Couldn't get to where I needed to go. Uh, without spinning it. So going in and seeing, you know, you know, there's a couple more little chamfers in there to that form, so I could go back in and push those a little bit darker. And it's always a balance, right? You're always just like very carefully, you know, sneaking up on the value, looking at it, saying, oh, could I push that a little more, or, or is that just right? Or, you know, what about the shadow side? Could that go a little darker? And um, again, you just have to be careful. Uh, those have sort of angles on them. They're, they're not exactly horizontal. So I said to myself, well, those shouldn't be, you know, as bright as the top. Um, in theory, it's about the same angle as the top. So I'm going to probably have to come back and brighten that up. But when I lay in the marker, you see it's much darker than when it dries. So that was only like a cool value marker one, probably. Uh, so it'll dry even lighter. And I'm um, doing a little bit ambient occlusion in there. And that's where the light has a hard time getting into those crevices. So going into wherever I have those crevices and it's going to be a tough area for the light to get in uh, and just <laughs> pushing in some more darks. Also, the uh, those little, you know, eye beam kind of structures that are holding that box to the frame, maybe those are actually, those could even be painted darker inside those hollow areas. So it could be value graphics, but also could just be ambient inclusion, um, making them darker. And here we're getting less light from the sky. Um, you know, under the truck there. So again, some more ambient inclusion from uh, the sky lighting into the shadow. So I'm adding some gradations based on that. So wherever your shadow is sort of the closest to the vehicle and gets the least amount of light, that's where you want to make it darker. Here I have, this is like an indigo blue Prismacolor pencil. So this is the full mixed media. We've got marker, um, colored pencil, and a bit of gouache. So um, I'm just making that shadow a bit more blue 
and to make have it make sense I want to use my sky right I need the color behind the vehicle to be a little more blue so I'm just sort of you know softly adding a little gradation over the top of my marker to make it a bit cooler you could also do this with a marker you know I could have grabbed a light blue a really light blue marker and just gone in and hit my shadow and also hit the uh, background behind my vehicle but in this case I sort of like the texture and um, wanted to use some pencil as part of the demo so you can see I'm just putting in some sort of sketchy lines to add a bit of texture to the background and now I'd come back and say well I want that local value and that the value graphics of those tires I want those definitely be a darker rubber so they're mixing in a little bit too much with the frame of the vehicle behind it so um, I want to push those a bit darker could even go more extreme obviously if they're really dark um, and I'm going to push that core shadow a bit try to make them look more round that works a bit better and we're about two-thirds of the way through this one so a quick one and uh, it again it's really all the same all the same physics it's just using different medium uh, in this case the uh, Copic markers versus Photoshop and like I said, I like them both, but um, it's uh, a fun way to work. Looks like I already hit that uh, yellow in there. I missed that. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. I went in and uh, put the uh, yellow marker, uh, the color of the ground. I probably did it when I was doing the ground. And uh, put it on all the underside surfaces of my vehicle, uh, wherever the reflected light. So the light's going to come down, bounces off that yellowish ground, then bounces up under those uh, chamfered surfaces so anywhere those surfaces point down towards the ground I just went right in there and I mixed the yellow with the uh, cool gray so I missed that somewhere along the way in my audio but that's the step and I was looking at it thinking though that you know that vertical side if it's top lighting could be even darker um, you know like I said true vertical surface with a vertical light is a really poor lighting strategy but um, imagine just pull the light out you know a couple degrees so we can get a little bit of that uh, light shining on the verticals uh, but it's really like my number two side there it's not perfectly tangent to that surface and here I'm grabbing an orange pencil and I'll put a couple stripes on the rims just to give it a little color accent this is my 50 degree ellipse guide so I'd already pulled those earlier so they would be ready and here I'm just trying to fill in that area a little bit down there um, to give a little color accent to that rim. There's my spiky hair showing up today. It's tough to use ellipse guides unless you look sort of straight down on them. And um, so that's why you're seeing my head poke in there. Um, still didn't quite get to look straight down, but it's hard to line them up unless you do that. And I wanted to uh, add a subtle color pop to the uh, side of this vehicle, but I didn't really want to get in there and paint that all with gouache and make it really, really tight. And also, um, very opaque. I want it to be very subtle. So that's why I grabbed an orange pencil and just blocked out a couple of, and I just went over what I had already drawn in my sketch just to shift the color a little bit. And I'm dropping a couple little other orange bits here and there. And then I'm going to grab some orange gouache, which is probably coming up next. Or maybe I do white first. And um, that'll be the last steps. A little bit of white gouache and a little bit of orange gouache. So here I'm using like, a, I think a number four round brush and just pulling out a couple little details. The brush is the best for putting in the small details. So if you want some really fine details on it, um, get a paintbrush. Don't use like a white highlighter pen, that sort of stuff. They're just awful. Um, you saw me just touch my middle finger to that. If before the uh, gouache dries and it's too bright um, and you have, it's too opaque over that surface, you can just hit it with your finger and knock it down a bit. Um, if you have a lot of gouache on there, of course, that's going to smear a lot. But if you don't have that much on, you just sort of touch it with your finger. And see, so like those were in shadow down sort of at the bottom. So I just touched it and it made it a little bit more transparent. And by doing that, it sort of mixes with the gray marker underneath. Like that one was too bright. So I just knocked it off a bit. And um, I do that quite a bit when I'm painting details. I'm going to put some little I've never really been happy on the design with that little gap right there between the cab structure and that box. So I just decided I'm going to drop a couple little louvered 
uh, vents in there. And that's what's catching some light, the edges of those louvers. And we'll go back and cast a shadow towards the very end. So here I'm going over the top of my line drawing and trying to push the uh, quality of the light across the top surface a bit. And here I'm actually even getting rid of the, the uh, heavy line mark that's holding that edge and actually letting the white hold that edge because I have a nice value to the background. So there I can use value instead of using my line. You know, line when it travels around a silhouette like that is kind of like just a moving little background. But if you have value, you don't really need that. So getting those some of those little seams and things to show up. And if it's not bright enough, just go back and hit it again. There's a little step here to the form. I wanted to make that little value change across there. And here's some orange for some little tail lights or graphics at the back of this. Doesn't exactly match the orange of my pencil. Um, it could have taken some more time to mix that up. But um, what I'll do here in the end is put a little of that orange onto my tire stripe to get them to work a little bit better together. And that's about it. Um, I think just a couple more little touch-ups here and there. Yeah, a couple more. I'm probably going to hit this tire, if I remember right. And then I'm going to show you the one I did before this, which has a slightly different uh, color palette, mainly because I used a warmer marker across the top, like it was kind of a colored light um, landing on my vehicle as well as the ground. So I'll show you that. But this is... A finished one. Maybe I will uh, scan these, put them on my uh, Facebook page or something like that, or Instagram them or something. But uh, there you go. That is my marker sketch this week. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. And I think I'm going to pop in this other sketch. Here we go. And that's the previous one. And you see, I had a lot more warm light in this one, especially across the top surfaces. So thanks again for tuning in and. Uh, Come back next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye.